SCP-4043, Gaia. Mother Nature is a personification of nature and the planet Earth focused around fertility and life-giving, with the word nature meaning birth or character in Latin. The Norse had a female personification of Earth as a deity, as did the Greeks, the Incas, and plenty of other cultures. The SCP Foundation has encountered a fair number of mythologically relevant deities in their time, but an entity representing all life on Earth would be quite the crucial one. A scenario involving Mother Nature and the Foundation could really only go one of two ways, one being pretty good and one being pretty bad. Let's find out which one SCP-4043 is. The article begins with a dialogue between two entities, one confused about who they are and where they are, and the other a Foundation AI sent to assist the confused one in settling into their role. The confused one remembers what the Foundation is, but it seems that most of their memories are gone. The AI suggests that they be patient, as their memories will eventually return, and says that their new nature will exert itself. The AI tells them that they are an answer to a problem, but won't give any other information, as its only parameters are to make them comfortable. The confused entity says that it's becoming angry, so the AI acquiesces and says that it will pull up the files and read them. The confused entity asks if the AI has a name, to which the AI responds that they may call it Natasha. They thank Natasha, but Natasha responds that there's no need to be premature with thanks. With that, we're given the file for SCP-4043-ARC-1, 4043 meaning that it's been archived and is no longer the current version. SCP-4043 is given the object class of Archon, meaning that while it could theoretically be contained, it's currently not due to the potentially disastrous effects that would occur. The containment procedures elaborate on this a little, as currently the containment of SCP-4043 involves the Foundation committing to two partially contradictory aims. First, the Foundation is to monitor and discredit the Mother Earth movement by funding political entities and media which seek to disprove or disgrace the movement and their ideas. Similar funding is to be provided towards organizations and individuals which seek to disprove and disgrace telepathic practitioners, shamanism, and mentalists. Secondly, the Foundation is to provide funding and support for environmental protection initiatives while discrediting and destabilizing politicians, organizations, corporations, and entities which discredit the global warming phenomenon and promote unfettered exploitation of natural resources. SCP-4043 is the designation for both a vast, semi-sentient consciousness spread across the planet Earth and the typically anthropomorphic physical manifestation of said consciousness. This consciousness is a conglomeration of all biomass on the planet, serving simultaneously as a representation of its health, a manifestation of its personality, and a force capable of driving its own success. So yes, it's literally Mother Earth, a consciousness that combines every living thing on the planet a pretty important thing for the Foundation to be aware of. The existence of 4043 is thought to be beneficial to life on Earth, and the existence of life on Earth is thought to be responsible for its existence. Both the consciousness and the physical manifestation are fundamentally benevolent towards all life on Earth. As a consequence of its sheer size, the consciousness processes thoughts and information at a rate too slow to be detected through regular telepathic perception. They have yet to actually communicate directly with it at all, although skilled practitioners can meditate over a long period to identify it. The physical manifestation, however, has been communicated with, 
but individuals attempting such a feat are liable to suffer irreversible mental and psychological damage due to the sheer size and complexity of the consciousness. Physical manifestations occur around twice a week, for roughly 6 hours each time, and each time 4043 will materialize within one of three identified chambers. Each of the chambers is located in the center of a biodiversity hotspot in a tropical equatorial region. Each chamber is roughly circular, with a radius of 25 to 35 meters, with multiple entrances and a large opening in the roof for sunlight, and each of them is filled with various forms of flora. Manifestations of Gaia vary in size and form between events, with various forms recorded including mammals, birds, and reptiles, though it tends to take a form analogous to the most complex organism in its near proximity. Since the establishment of permanent bases near the chambers, more than half of all of the manifestations have been in a humanoid form. Regardless of shape, the form is always comprised of biological material, similar in composition to both muscle and wood. During such events, it will typically sit peacefully and playfully but gently interact with any and all life that approaches it. Animals are usually drawn to the manifestation, and demonstrate comfort and pleasure in its presence. Notably, prey and predator species will often peacefully interact while in its presence, though this wears off after manifestation. Animals that engage with it have been tracked afterwards, with unusually high fertility and survival rates being recorded. On the flip side, the manifestation will act in a skittish manner if presented with human technology of any significant complexity, or any weapon which could possibly bring harm to it. In these cases, it has been documented demanifesting prematurely. The mechanisms through which it operates are unclear, though the potential for feedback loops has been confirmed. While the Earth's biosphere is healthy, the manifestations are thought to be larger and stronger, and its ability to positively influence the success of life is more pronounced. Conversely, if the biosphere declines in health, it seems to directly correlate to Gaia's health and influence. Since its discovery by the Foundation in 1956, the manifestations have been slowly but steadily weakening, and telepaths have reported increased difficulty in identifying the global consciousness. Two MTFs, Mother's Keepers and Brainiacs, were formed to deal with Gaia, with Mother's Keepers comprised primarily of biologists and ecologists while Brainiacs is comprised entirely of telepaths. Alright, so it's Mother Nature, and it's been on a steady decline over the last few decades due to humanity growing increasingly distant from nature. We're then sent back to the confused person from the start, who asks Natasha to confirm that SCP-4043 is Mother Nature, the metaphorical idea behind life and fertility. Natasha says, of course, and asks if they are surprised by this knowledge. They respond with, not really, but ask, what does it have to do with them? Natasha says that there's more they will need to know in order to understand that question, and then gives them an updated version of the 4043 document from 1994. The hammer drops right away here, as the object class is now listed as neutralized. The description states that SCP-4043 was, prior to its death, the physical and mental embodiment of the Earth's biosphere. It would periodically manifest in corporeal form twice weekly in one of three locations, in Costa Rica, the Congo Highlands, and Borneo, each notable for their exceptional biodiversity and relatively untouched nature. As of 1989, time between manifestations became increasingly delayed, and manifestation events became increasingly brief, with the final manifestation occurring for only 95 seconds in 1992. As manifestation events became rarer, 
members of MTF IOTA 5, Brainiacs, were deployed to attempt traditionally risky techniques in an effort to preserve 4043. Since its final manifestation, no telepath has managed to identify a pattern of thoughts or emotions consistent with those displayed by 4043. Since its death, MTF IOTA 4 and biologists worldwide have been noting an increasingly high rate of extinction, with losses of species far beyond even the worst of predictions based upon human activities. Foundation researchers further noted losses in fertility across a vast number of species, with losses compounding exponentially. We're given a transcript of a video log from Gaia's final manifestation in 1992. A team of researchers in lab coats can be seen camped within a large, dark chamber. Sleeping bags and camp chairs are clustered at one end of the chamber, with MTF IOTA 4 researchers engaged in a variety of activities. Rotting vegetation and fungi can be seen all around the edge of the chamber. Three telepath members of MTF IOTA 5, dressed in robes, sit in meditation in the center of the chamber, with the other researchers giving them a wide berth. They begin to stir slightly, and then awaken, as the other researchers quickly scramble towards their makeshift camp. A spark of light then appears at the other end of the chamber, and after a few seconds, vine and roots begin to curl from the ground, coalescing into a feminine, humanoid form. The form is no more than a meter in height, and moves unsteadily. The three telepaths quickly enter meditation again as the other researchers watch. The manifestation curls into the fetal position, twitching in pain. After several seconds, one of the telepaths begins to twitch as well, curling her hands into tight fists and sweating. The other two telepaths cry out in shock and collapse into unconsciousness. The manifestation crawls across the ground, shedding a trail of rotten vines and leaves behind it. It crawls into the lap of the sweating and straining telepath and curls into a ball. She slowly wraps her arms around the manifestation and speaks softly to it. It sits there, curled in her lap for 45 seconds before suddenly collapsing into a pile of roots and vines. The telepath stops twitching and observes the pile of rotten vegetation in her lap, a look of grief spreading across her face. Needless to say, in a world where telepaths exist, being connected to a creature of any type when it dies is likely to be traumatic, even more so when it's literally the representation of all life on Earth. Two days later, that telepath was brought in for an interview by the head researcher of MTF IOTA 4, John Reynolds. The telepath, Claire Yen, has been working on the 4043 project for almost 15 years, and she was a junior trainee when they first attempted to make direct contact with Gaia. They brought her on in the middle of 1977, after a few members of the original team burned out. Reynolds asks her to clarify what she means by burned out, to which she says that telepathy isn't an exact science, and the full risks aren't always clear, but generally speaking, making contact with multiple minds at once is a delicate task. When you link to another mind, your brain mimics their thought patterns in addition to your own thoughts. Connect to a bunch of minds at once, and you can end up with more thoughts than your brain can process, making the end result essentially an epileptic fit. The first thing a telepath needs to learn before multitasking is how to limit the amount of information that they take in at once, putting up mental walls to shield yourself from input you can't handle. SCP-4043 was literally billions of trillions of tiny thoughts, all at the same time. With the global consciousness, it's so big that these thoughts are spread out, taking hours to resolve as they move around the planet. Normally this amounts to being basically background static to them, but when she manifests, 
those thoughts are focused and it can be extremely dangerous. The first few of them to try were left in a vegetative state. All members of IOTA 5 undergo specialized training, essentially learning how to stand way back with your hands over your ears and your eyes shut as you start a conversation by shouting through a wall. Claire is the only one who served in this capacity for longer than a decade due to the stress. Reynolds asks why they refer to 4043 as a she, to which Claire just says, that's how she is. She's a conglomeration of all life on Earth, most of which is female, as males tend to be biologically expendable. Humanity has also had a big effect on her, due to making up a lot of the cognitive thomosphere, and humanity in general thinks of her as Mother Nature. Reynolds moves on to discussing the recent events, as certain individuals have questions about the implications of what happened. Claire says that there's no point in being cryptic with a telepath, as the council wants to know what the hell's going on. To put it bluntly, Gaia is dead, as Claire felt her die in her arms. The other two agents are still unconscious from how much pain she felt, and so much of her was missing, while well, now there is nothing. Reynolds asks her what she said to Gaia before she died. Claire doesn't respond, so Reynolds insists, and she says that she lied to her, telling her that she was going to be okay. She also told her her name, as she was curious. She didn't have a name, and she was curious about them. Reynolds asks how she got this far without melting her brain, but Claire says that there wasn't a lot of her left just before the end. She was weak enough that she could pick up more specific thoughts, and she thinks that that was the human in her, wanting a name. He then asks what after effects can they expect, and what are the consequences of her death. Claire says that she was the manifestation of all life on Earth. She shepherded it, and cared for it, and was a representation of how it felt. She was life itself, and our fate was tied to her. Reynolds asks her to clarify that with Gaia's death, life on Earth is doomed. She says not quite, as they're pretty sure that similar events have happened a few times already, so life will keep going and build up again. Gaia will probably regenerate when it does, but it'll be bad, and they'll see a lot of complex species go extinct, probably including humans. Reynolds asks if there's any way to stop this from happening, to which she just says that they need to stop humanity from killing the ecosystem. Back to the confused person, who asks how we possibly made it through Mother Nature dying. Natasha responds that there was a calculated grace period of several decades after the death, before total ecosystem collapse. A number of emergency protocols were considered, including direct intervention in human activities, but this was discarded as not being immediately impactful enough. Attempts to enhance life through the use of reality benders or magical means were also discarded for a lack of predicted reliability. Other contingencies were considered, but eventually a general consensus was reached, called Operation Geneva. Operation Geneva was an attempt to restore Gaia through artificial means. The underlying principle was that Gaia was a conglomerate of the lives of Earth's biosphere, and if you had a way to tap into the consciousness of everything on the planet, and then channeled that connection into a psychic construct, you could essentially restore her to her former state. The underlying principles of the operation were sound, and even though it was all theoretical, a large aspect to psychic mechanisms is belief. Since they were confident it would work, it should work. They built the machine around the particle accelerator in Geneva, and piggybacked onto the power supply there. 
The exact mechanics are subtle, and not within the capacity of Natasha to understand, but they gathered every available telepath to develop the psychic construct in real time, gave them an idea to focus towards, and turned on the machine. They achieved their goal, and managed to restore the process. The confused person asks Natasha what the catch is, as there's something she isn't saying. Natasha acquiesces again, and brings up another version of the 4043 document. SCP-4043 is now listed as Keter, although the description is still largely the same. The difference is that it states that telepaths who connect to the consciousness perceive a constant, overwhelming emotional presence of anger and physical desires. Telepathic contact is theoretically possible with a physical representative of the consciousness, although the consequences of doing so are likely to be lethal. This new Gaia does not share the general benevolent nature of its predecessor, and consists of base instincts, primarily the urges to feed, fight, flee, and or mate. Beyond that, an underlying constant pain can be detected in the consciousness. Physical manifestations of the consciousness occur daily, in one of three chambers, for around 12 hours, and in each instance the manifestation will be around 3 meters in height, and of a humanoid form comprised of biological material similar to both muscle and wood. During such events, the manifestation will leave the chamber and wander the surrounding area, relentlessly attacking any humans or evidence of humans, particularly technology. Due to the typically large size and extreme strength and durability of the manifestations, these events almost invariably result in the loss of human life. Like its predecessor, the existence of the new Gaia is beneficial to the biodiversity and success of life on Earth, but this one has the additional effect of altering ecosystems and animal behavior in ways that are directly harmful to humans. Since its creation, drought, famine, and insect infestation of crop yields has increased. Aggressive behavior in animals that cohabitate with humans has increased. And there's been an increase in antibiotic resistance and virulence among a number of strains of various infectious bacteria. Foundation models predict that resulting bacterial infections would become untreatable within 10 years, and the resulting epidemics, bolstered by animal vectors, would be fatal to over 90% of the human population within another 10 years. So yeah, once again the Foundation tried something way over their pay grade with the best of intentions, but rather than restoring Mother Nature, it seems that they created Nurgle the Plague Lord. Natasha says that Operation Geneva was jokingly referred to afterwards as Operation Frankenstein, and other contingencies were prepared. With that, she next provides the file on Operation Scythe. Operation Scythe was launched in 1997, headed up by Reynolds with the objective of terminating the new Gaia. The protocols for resource expenditure restriction and anonymity protocols were suspended, so it was a pretty hefty operation, which makes sense as the failure of containing the problem likely meant the eradication of humanity. Over the previous year, the new Gaia has been able to operate unhindered, and it's believed that its presence is responsible for worsened conditions for human agriculture, and a severe increase in antibiotic immunity among a number of pathogens. Given the incorporeal nature of the entity, standard containment is not possible, and the existing procedures have failed to limit its influence or behavior. Operation Scythe consists of 40 telepaths from MTF IOTA 5, serving as the cognitive anchor for the operation each supported by the use of Class A Artificial Telepathy Enhancers. Two special roles are designated as well. The leader, 
Claire, who is to coordinate and direct the activity, and another agent as the scapegoat, who is to culminate the activity. The actual process that the operation consists of is largely psychic technobabble, but essentially the team is going to create a series of mental constructs nested within one another, and maintain them all for precisely 23 minutes and 14 seconds. At this point, they then relinquish control to the scapegoat, who is to maintain the assemblage of constructs by himself. All of the other members then immediately self-administer a fast-acting general anesthetic, at which point the scapegoat pulls the final trigger. The document mentions that if the operation is not completed in a suitably short period of time, the resulting constructs are liable to cause greater psychological harm to populations than is necessary. If one of the constructs is overloaded, the operation will also fail. Long-term consequences are guaranteed for the scapegoat team member, including a permanent loss of telepathic ability, long-term loss of fine motor control, and short-term memory loss, although those are only the less impactful damages predicted. Insanity or cerebral hemorrhaging are also probable outcomes. As usual, killing a god doesn't come without some consequences. The operation commenced and was deemed successful, with no manifestation events recorded in the days afterward. Telepathic detection of the mass consciousness also returned negative results. The scapegoat agent died as a result, as a consequence of mass cerebral hemorrhaging. Five other members suffered from short-term memory loss afterwards, with near-complete recovery expected after rehabilitation. 12,098 civilians died across the world as a result, mostly in traffic accidents or falls from heights resulting from the brief loss of consciousness. Mass amnestics were deployed and cover stories for persisting instances were provided. These losses were considered acceptable, and Reynolds was commended for the successful denial of impending catastrophe. Claire, on the other hand, resigned from her position as leader of IOTA 5 afterwards. The confused person remarks on how clever and brutal Operation Scythe was. They used a runaround loop, which is normally something you'd want to avoid at any cost, as it can cause irreversible cycles of thought patterns if you accidentally dip into it. If you're working in a group though, you can set it up between you in a safe space, and if you're really clever, you can use it to generate an exponentially growing series of outputs, so long as the system is maintained. They used it to fuel Icarus-type constructs, which enable long-range contact, and Styx-type constructs, which temporarily deny any thought. If their calculations are correct, based upon the amount of power that 40 skilled telepaths could generate, multiplied by about 24 minutes of looping, you'd stop every living thing on the planet from thinking for about half a second, and anything conscious nearby from thinking indefinitely. Since Gaia is entirely an entity of thought, built upon the thoughts of every other living thing, stopping all thoughts for just half a second would cause it to cease to exist entirely. They then ask Natasha how they knew that. Natasha doesn't respond immediately, so they ask again how could they possibly know all that jargon. Natasha says that it's time then for them to know who they are, and brings up one last file. The final file is one more iteration of SCP-4043, now listed as both Safe and Archon. This version is considered self-containing, and the Foundation's efforts are directed towards safely removing it from its state of containment so that its beneficial properties may begin to manifest in full. In order to accelerate this process, 
The foundation is to assist and credit the Mother Earth movement, channeling funding towards political entities and media which seek primarily to support the movement and their ideas. This is in stark contrast to the original version. The foundation is also to provide funding and support for environmental protection initiatives, promoting individuals and organizations which seek to preserve and re-establish natural environments, while discrediting and destabilizing anyone who does the opposite. In the event that the new SCP-4043 proves hostile, the reopening of Operation Scythe is authorized to protect human interests. SCP-4043-C is former Special Agent Claire Yen, deliberately ascended through artificial means in Operation Demeter into the role originally occupied by SCP-4043. She comprises a vast global consciousness, the sum of all thoughts by all life on Earth, filtered through the base framework of Claire's personality. This consciousness serves simultaneously as a representation of its health, a manifestation of its personality, and a force capable of driving its own success. Her existence is intended to be beneficial to life on Earth, with the human personality at its core intended to enable a balance between human, natural, and foundation interests. She will grow more powerful and capable of enhancing the success of life in a positive feedback loop, with the combined successes of human society and natural biodiversity. As a consequence of her sheer size, the consciousness processes thoughts and information at a rate too slowly to be detected through regular telepathic perception, and she's experiencing a delayed release from self-containment, due to slowly maturing into her role. In order to assist her with this process, a neurally attuned telepathic artificially sentient helper, A-Class, was developed and synchronized to a mechanical psychic network. An AI was selected for this role due to their capability of stretching the telepathic signals into a form coherent to Claire, and is patient enough to await responses. As of the last update, Claire has been in conversant communication with the AI for a period of 17 months. So the confused person has been Claire all along, and the AI has actually been communicating with her for months now due to the slowness of the responses. Natasha tells her that Claire is a large part of this new consciousness, but not all of her. She doesn't remember being Claire, but she can remember the foundation and what it feels like to be human. She also remembers grief and guilt. Natasha believes that this is why she volunteered for this, her grief over the failure to protect Gaia, and guilt over being forced to terminate the new Gaia. Claire can't really accept that she's the new Mother Nature, but Natasha asks her where she is right now, and she doesn't know. Natasha tells her that in all the time they've been talking, she hasn't noticed that she isn't in a physical space, because she doesn't exist in physical space anymore. As powerful as her mind is now, it's not quick, and Natasha asks her what she can see around her. After a delay, Claire says that she can see four plain white walls of painted concrete. Natasha tells her to push those walls all the way down, but Claire is confused on how she could push down concrete walls. Natasha explains that she's the one who built them, as her telepathic shield to keep her mind safe from more powerful ones. She volunteered for this, but this is why she was selected. She could automatically keep her defenses up, which would protect her through the transition. As they are her walls, she can push them down with just a feather, or blow them up if she wanted to. And if she doesn't push them down, humanity and most of life on Earth is likely doomed, 
along with her. After a very long delay, Claire finally comments on how beautiful it is, as she can see so many minds and so many possibilities. She can push on them all, and see how to push to make them better and to succeed. Natasha tells her that this is her role now, and asks what she's going to do first. Claire says that she thinks she's going to Borneo, and thanks Natasha, who is glad to see her conscious at last. Alright, this one is fairly straightforward. The Foundation discovered that all of life on Earth is connected across one great globe-spanning consciousness, but unfortunately they find that she's getting sicker and weaker as time goes on, because humanity is a bit of a blight on nature. She eventually dies, and rather than trying numerous various countermeasures to try and stop the inevitable extinction of all life, they go with the plan of just making a new mother nature. Unfortunately, this one really hates humanity, and starts spreading massive plagues, so the Foundation sends it back into the shop and kills that one off as well. Rather than accepting that this might not be the best idea, they make another new mother nature, but rather than resurrecting the last one, one of their telepathic agents volunteers to become the new one. The idea is that having the base of the new one be human in nature will make it far less likely to be antagonistic towards humans, and so far it seems that it worked out. Claire lost most of her memories in the process, and has a long way to go to being as natural as the original was at the job, but it seems like her heart is in the right place. The jury's out on whether she continues to function in a benevolent and capable capacity in the long run, but for now it appears that the Foundation dodged a bullet, all while doing very little to actually help the environment. There's been plenty of these sort of environmentally conscious SCPs, largely due to the theme of the SCP-6000 contest being nature, but this one doesn't overly belabor the point. Mother Nature is a concept that goes back hundreds of years across numerous cultures, and it certainly stands to reason that if she did exist, she wouldn't be at her healthiest. Sure, if humanity died out, she probably would have come back eventually, but the Foundation isn't about to pass up an opportunity to make their own god. 